of Australia, land of crocodiles, big knives, kangaroos and other assorted marsupials, toilets that flush in reverse, intense heat, sprawling deserts, and a history of aggressive uh, colonization. Anyways, let me get back on task here. This video is about a couple bands in Australia that I think are really standout acts. Um, and the last couple bands are kind of in the family tree of Tame Impala. I'll get into that. A lot of the best music to me coming out right now is in Australia. This first band I actually talked about in my last listening list video. The band is called Glass Beams. They actually just came out with their first EP this year. Their identities are hidden. They wear these cool looking masks made out of uh, beads. They're from Melbourne. I think Australians pronounce that as Melbourne, but uh, I don't have a speech impediment like Australians do, so I'm calling it Melbourne. Oh my God. They are an instrumental band. So there's the drummer, the bassist, and then the guitarist who also plays the keyboard stuff, mostly synths. I actually didn't find this description anywhere else except on Bandcamp. They were really inspired by the concert for George, which is a tribute concert for George Harrison that a bunch of like famous musicians played at. But Ra Ravi Shankar played at it as well, who is this famous guitarist that um, taught the Beatles about Indian music and John Coltrane about Indian music and stuff. I guess the, the guitar guitarist is Indian and his parents are from India. So he found all this music from specifically his father's hometown, Indian classical, disco, pop. He kind of mixed that in with, you know, 70s type of synth atmospheric type of sound. And I see, you see a lot of stuff online wherever these are that they sound like Krungbin or they're, they're kind of like Krungbin. I said this in my other video, but the only ways they're like Krungbin is the fact that they're instrumental, but Krungbin has vocals sometimes too. They kind of have an exotic sound, but past that, there's not a lot of similarities, but you know, Krungbin doesn't have synths. It's more dark sounding than Krungbin. Krungbin has a lot of like happier sounding, brighter songs. So I think, I think it's kind of like comparing an apple to an orange. Are they a little similar? Sure. But some people are saying, why would I listen to this when Krungbin exists? They, I mean, get over yourself. You know what I mean? Their EP is called Mirage. I could listen to the first track over and over again. It's called Mirage. It starts with this vocal, some type of like vocoder. And the one video that blew up of them playing it live, he's singing into a mic. But I guess it's going through a computer so that this creepy like keyboard chorus comes through. Another thing I really like about it is the drummer uses the, it looks like a wind chime, but it's like the tiny metal bars on a thing and you like brush across them and it sounds like a wind chime. I'm surprised how much just one little detail like that can add so much atmosphere and it's also a good way to like transition between like the chorus and a bridge or something the tone of the bass is immaculate most of the songs are in that exotic minor harmonic minor type of sound flat two raise seventh minor third that uh, music theory nerds know what's up all right the the last track rattlesnake actually has I'm pretty sure it's a sitar, and he's he's using a, a few different actual classical Indian instruments, and that was really cool hearing it combined with the more modern instrumentation of synths and electric guitar, electric bass, and stuff. And all in all, I just like playing this this EP when I'm at work. It's very danceable. Anyways, next fucking band. This band is called Mild Life. They're also from Melbourne or Melbourne or Melbourne. Say it however you want, depending on how much you hate yourself. I'm calling it Melbourne. And I'm really emphasizing that fact to piss off any Australian that watches this video. This band is mostly instrumental, but they do have they do have vocals and lyrics and stuff like that too. And it's not like some mostly instrumental bands where the vocals kind of suck, which is probably why they're instrumental. The vocals are actually pretty good. They're a more fusion type of thing. They do very dense synth atmospheres. I've been listening to them over and over again. There's, it's Their first album specifically is really, really good. It's called Phase. I have this common problem 
with a lot of bands where they want to do a epic like 10 minute long track to start an album i'm looking at you king gizzard and it's unnecessarily long it gets a little boring and it makes me not want to listen to the rest of the album this they managed to pull me in really good the song is called the magnificent moon and it's it's like nine minutes and it just starts with an arpeggiating synth and they're they're sweeping a filter across it and the rest of the band starts coming in and it just it really takes you on a journey this album has been really pulling me into the world of music that used synths for the longest time i was kind of a snob like i only like listening to real instruments synth is a real instrument someone's playing it and the thing that's really cool about it is that you can design the timbre of the instrument as you're playing it and just the fact you can do that with an instrument is crazy because all the other instruments you can't really do that except like unless you like use guitar pedals that track specifically on this album really opened my eyes to it as a tool of musical expression i also like the the second track zwango zop i don't know what that means but i like it it sounds like an alien tiktok dance like a tiktok dance an alien came up with their second album is pretty good too i will say i'm i like the first album more but i'm also again I'm, I'm a hater and i'm a snob so i usually only like the first album a band puts out so just the fact i like the second album is saying something i like the song citations on the second album specifically it kind of reminds me of pink floyd animals pink floyd uh acoustic guitar throughout but with the synths and stuff it's really cool sometimes when i play at my job a customer will come in and they're like is this pink floyd i'm like no it's better than pink floyd and it was made this century sucker moving on I also wanted to make this video because a lot of times when people think of Australia and music coming out of it, they only really think of King Gizzard and, and, and Tame Impala. At least for me, that's all I could really think of. I just wanted to shine some light on some smaller artists coming out of Australia. This next band is called, it's called Gum. G-U-M. The stuff you chew in your mouth and you stick under a desk in middle school. And this is where I get into the Tame Impala family tree because he is the drummer that plays live in Tame Impala. And from things I've read online, sometimes he helps in the production of his albums. They just don't, it's not like credited because they're laid back about that type of stuff, I guess. The way I discovered this was YouTube suggested me a music video and it was a song featuring Ambrose Kenny Smith from King Gizzard. He's the keyboard player in King Gizzard. That song was Minor Setback. And also the drum recording is that signature crunchy Tame Impala type of sound that I love. It's a very infectious shuffle groove. And he's a great drummer too. I mean, some of the drum parts are super impressive. The kick drum has that signature low mid growl that I think is really important to Tame Impala drum sounds. At least early Tame Impala. And he also creates these huge synth atmospheres his one album called saturnia has a little bit of like string arrangements and stuff it blends really well with the synthetic string type sound and his the synth sounds he uses are they're kind of they're more modern sounding than someone like mac to marker or tame impala where they're really deep into this vintage synth world analog stuff and all that these synths they, they might be analog but to me they sound more modern and clean and digital type of sound i also like the album the underdog i will say a lot of times he he starts getting into like psychedelic pop territory that i'm not a fan of just because it, it i feel like i'm in like a bubblegum world but in reality i'm like edgy middle schooler mentality world but i still like a lot of the textural things going on that are integral to psychedelic music also in the tame impala tree family tree they're called pond the drummer of gum is in it but the whole band is basically tame impala's backing band including joe ryan who i guess does the visuals for tame impala i don't know if he does the album covers or the live show visuals i, I don't know no i will say on this list this is probably the one i like the least but they're still really good um, because again, they, they, they do a lot of the psychedelic pop type stuff that I just, 
I can't bring myself to listen to it. To me, it's kind of cheesy, but a lot of people like it too, so I'm not judging. The album Tasmania came out in 2019, though. That song has almost no skips in it. It's really good. Lots of cool synth work. Lots of cool guitar work. The drum recording is very cool. They do some experimental effects and stuff. The vocals, I think, are sometimes kind of weak. Sometimes it kind of feels like I'm listening to a, a middle schooler trying out for the middle school musical, of like Peter Pan or something. It's still good, though. Uh, every once in a while, I just got to skip a song because it's, it's too much. Anyways, check out these Australian bands. They're really cool. Got some really fun stuff. Thanks for stroking my ego if you like and subscribe and comment. And if you hated it, like this one guy who left like the entirety of the Christian Bible in three different of my comment sections because he disagreed with one of my opinions, don't do that. That's weird and you need therapy. Otherwise, you can dislike it. Just don't be weird. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>